and uh, welcome back. In this episode of Home Robotics, I'll be showing you how I restored this uh, vintage remote control car. It was donated to me by a um, follower. He said I hadn't used it in a, in a couple of decades, I believe, and uh, needed some TLC. I did plug in the battery and um, got the remote control working, however, could not get the car to work. So I'll just take it apart and see what's going on with it. Initially, I looked at taking off the shell uh, by uh, taking four screws from the bottom. This took a little bit of time because some of the screws were corroded, but that wasn't too much of a problem. Now, most uh, remote control cars like this are made in China nowadays. Back in the 80s, 90s, and 70s, there was a time when they were made in you know countries like Japan, Hong Kong, and Singapore, and the quality was much better. I actually owned a car like this myself. It was called a Tandy Frame Buggy, and uh, left it overseas so I'm uh, really looking forward to finding it and rebuying it just for nostalgia purposes. Here I've removed the uh, the shell and as you see it needs a little bit of a clean. Uh, some parts are broken but we can fix that, that's not an issue at all. And here I am just removing some of the accessories, however I was really keen to get inside the electronics to determine why the car wasn't responding. Um, the lid took a little bit of uh, maneuvering to remove, however, finally managed to do it. So I finally got the lid off and revealed the standard 1980 circuitry, large resistors, large transistors and large microcontrollers. All of which today would fit on a 50 cent coin. Anyway, makes it easy for me to fix. Copy of wires that did get in the way, and I was really worried when you start moving the uh, circuit board, some of the wires come off the um, solder, so I had to be very careful. That yellow wire there, pay attention to that, because that'll prove to be one of the main sources of the problem. Here I am taking the steering mechanism. It doesn't use a servo, just use a motor, potentiometer, and a gear or add a series of gears to turn the wheels. Still effective and cheaper than using a servo. So it's never easy uh, to remove the front bumper so that I can then disengage the steering mechanism. Eventually that was done. The steering mechanism connected via a control rod and a collar which is then secured to the main geared motor. Okay, so I finally got it out. Now I can release both the circuit board and the steering mechanism and from here look at uh, also trying to separate the main motor down the back. But before we do that, we're just going to disengage the antenna wire. So there's a single screw holding a hinge together and that secures the main motor to the body and then the motor is uh, secured to the shell via two springs that act as shock absorbers and it's releasing that pin now. Like I said, there's that yellow wire. The yellow wire is supposed to be connected to the switch, I believe, which uh, provides the negative connection. Um, when I looked at the switch, there's only just one wire. Naturally, he knew two wires coming out of the switch to make something work. So here I am just doing some tests, got a, a 9 volt regulator, connected uh, both terminals to the black and one to the yellow, which I thought should have been red, but it wasn't. And then just uh, there's the LED that's come on now, so we know the car is working, and connected the radio, and there we go, we can make the motor go back and forth, however, I cannot get the steering wheel to work at all. So it looks like the steering mechanism is stuck. So then I took it apart, at least the um, 
gearing mechanism just so I can see what the motor is doing. And when nothing else works, a uh, spray of WD-40 inside the uh, armature contacts and on the axle just so I can free up all the gunk. And then from there we did a quick test and it looks like it is turning but it's sort of getting stuck. I couldn't work out why, I thought it was the motor but the motor was spinning freely. I had a look at the wires, the wires had a clean connection from the microcontroller to the motor but for some reason it was still getting stuck when I rotated the controller back and forth. So if the motor was fine, the connections were fine, the microcontroller I think was fine, so I thought maybe you take apart the remote control, maybe it was getting intermittent signal. So I did that. And then I saw the contacts where the sliders move back and forth and just sprayed a bit of WD-40. It looks like it was all covered in, uh, in that lithium grease, so I sort of cleaned it up a little bit, sprayed a bit of WD-40 and then uh, reattached it. And that solved the problem. It looks like it was intermittent contacts on the radio. And I've just reattached the gearing system and you can see it move back and forth as I turn the wheel. Give it a bit of a clean. Once again, WD-40 and I'm using a brush now. To try and tackle those hard to get spots rather than just a cloth. Seems to work fine. So I've solved the circuitry problem, which means the car actually works. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up the car and giving it a bit of a cosmetic enhancement before I can uh, start using it again. I gave the shell a quick clean. Uh, later on in the video you'll see I made some slight changes to the uh, windscreen. And I also gave the front end a really good clean as well in the bath with a bit of hot soapy water. Back to reattaching all the parts as they were assembled. Of course, this took a little bit longer. However, I managed to initially reattach the steering mechanism. Here, I obviously forgot to put the collar on, so I'm going to put the collar back on. Now I'm just reattaching the pin which will secure the main motor onto the body and then it'll be to uh, cover the electronics next. Before I do that I applied a bead of uh, hot glue between the wires and the contacts on the board that way they don't come off. Disadvantage is if they do come off with inside the bead of glue I'd have to remove the whole thing but I'm hoping it's just a one time job. I won't be too harsh with the uh, car. Alright, so the lid's back on and just a quick uh, test to make sure I haven't crimped any wires. There you go, left, right, forward, backwards. We are good to go. Wasn't entirely happy with the uh, windshield and the rest of the um, railing, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to take it apart, give it a good decent coat of paint so I can make it look as new as possible. So you'll have to watch me do that for the next few minutes.
For some reason, the um, windscreen had some scratches, so I just sanded that down. And sanded down some of the other uh, corrosion, which was on the chrome, even though the parts are plastic. And then from there, I painted all the parts with multiple layers of uh, black gloss paint. Why did I choose that color? Because it's the only color I have at home at the moment. I didn't want to go buy anything else for this project. And just uh, going to reattach all the black shiny parts. Given this is a 35 year old car, I couldn't find the exact replacement battery. So, this is an interim solution an 8 by AA battery pack, which is now it's currently mounted on the bottom just for convenience. However, I'll be mounting it in the tray. And the final step was just to secure the spare tyre and the back rail and that was achieved using a single screw. Now let's have a look at the final result. Do you remember what it looked like at the beginning of the film? So we finished restoring this RC truck. The only thing that's remaining is finding a suitable 9.6 volt battery to fit inside that cavity. Um, if not, I'll just uh, make one. But for now, I'm happy with the alternate arrangement of using an 8-pack AA sitting in the um, tray. Uh, what was broken? Uh, the motor for the steering mechanism was broken. That needed a bit of fixing. And there were some wires which needed resoldering. Otherwise, you saw how it performed earlier on. I'm really happy so far. And uh, for the next project, 
another remote control car from the 1980s. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.